Could you benefit from building supreme confidence? What would change for you if you played your best when under pressure? What's it costing you to not have the confidence, the poise, and skill to execute when your team needs you most? I've created an exclusive training video designed just for you. I outline the three critical keys to building unshakable supreme confidence and dominating under pressure. You'll also find out how you can apply these to your career today so that you can start to speed up your results and follow a predictable system to get you to your goals. Go to omnityou.com forward slash dominate under pressure. You can go ahead and access that free training in less than two minutes. You'll be learning exactly what I teach my high performance professional athletes and clients about what it takes to dominate. Again, I'm not you.com forward slash dominate under pressure. If you try to get right, then you listen to my dad. <laughs> He's a beast. And if you don't want to listen to him, okay, okay. You don't want to, you don't want to get successful. If you ain't trying to dominate, man, then go listen to something else. Welcome athletes, top performers, and all those looking to gain that killer instinct that edge you need to dominate in any environment. This is the Sports Motivation Podcast, and I'm your host, Nee Shobo. I played ball and succeeded at the highest levels, and I'm now committed to showing you how you can accomplish the ambitious goals and visions that you have. This podcast is designed to teach you high-level strategy, not just fluff and hype. This will cut to the core if you let it, and by taking action on the practical, and next level advice I share, you will see results. Expect that. Expect to be more confident. Expect to be more focused. Expect to be more decisive. And expect to be more fearless. Expect to become the leader your vision needs you to become. So listen up. Take notes. Let's get to it. Welcome to the Sports Motivation Podcast. It is me, Nii Shobo, your host, teacher, mentor, friend. Yo, today I'm excited. You know I love talking books. And today I'm going to be breaking down the top 10 books that I believe that you need in order to help you develop a dominant mindset. I'm not you mentality is all about dominating. And what do I mean by dominating? I mean establishing a powerful presence in your arena, in your sport, in your uh, profession. And you do that not necessarily by competing. You do that by being who you really are because who you really are is a powerful force. And a lot of people get this twisted because they focus so much on other people and being better than other people. And they think that having a dominant mindset means that you dominate others. Dominating others in the field of competition is simply a byproduct of being who you really are. You will dominate others. You will be a standout. You will be a part of the 2%. But it all comes down to, I believe, being who it is that you really are. When you talk about being in a, li- a lion in the jungle, a lion doesn't have to act like a zebra. It doesn't have to act like a cheetah, a tiger, a bear, a, a python. A lion is simply a lion, period. And by virtue of being a lion, he dominates. He dominates others, but he dominates. He's a physical presence in his environment, and he has the ability to lead and get results, all right? And so you know that I'm a big advocate of reading. I believe in reading. And the reason why I believe in reading, there's a lot of, there's a lot of reasons behind it. Um, but I always say I don't even really like to read necessarily. I just really love to learn. And I love to learn because I love to grow and I love to evolve. I love to accomplish just like you do. And reading helps me do that. I can read stories of other people. I can read autobiographies and biographies outlining and detailing the things that people had to go through in order to accomplish. It gives me a more realistic sense of what's going to need to happen in order for me to do what I need to do, right? If I read a book by Arnold Schwarzenegger and he, he reached all of his goals, every single one he had set up for himself, including being a, you know, being a politician, making $20 million, you know, in movies, marrying or being with a supermodel, becoming the strongest, fittest man in the world, all these things, all of his goals, if he can do it, I'm just going to find out what he did and apply some principles to my own journey, et cetera. 
I can also read informational books or how-to, instructional how-to books that detail, you know, for me the things I must do in order to accomplish a goal. I can read books on philosophies and different ways of thinking. I can read classic books that have stood the test of time. There's a ton of books to read, all right? And it's a really simple way to learn. It's a really cheap way to learn, quite frankly. I buy books pretty much every day on Amazon, and I never feel any guilt about it. My wife used to give me hell about it, but now she doesn't because she knows many times a book costs as much as, you know, a cup of coffee she gets at Dutch Bros. So anyway, my point is this. I want to I outline for you 10 books that I believe that you need to read in order to help you develop a dominant mindset, all right? And so these books are not going to be just books on developing a dominant mindset. They, they are books that if you read will contribute to you developing a mindset. So they're all over the board here, um, but I'm going to start with this first one. I literally got them stacked up right here on my desk. I'm going to be going through each one and explaining who is by, of course, the title and the impact that this book had on me, all right? Some of these I mentioned before. Some of them I don't mention as much. So let's get to it, all right? Number one book that you must read in order to develop a dominant mindset, and I'm glad it's on the top. That wasn't on purpose. Is Bill Walsh's book, The Score Takes Care of Itself. The subtitle is My Philosophy on Leadership. Bill Walsh was the coach of the San Francisco 49ers in the 80s. Um, I think they won four championships. Bill Walsh was ahead of his time, meaning Bill Walsh was thinking in such a way that most football coaches weren't thinking. And so what I got from this book, you don't even have to be a football fan, honestly, to read this book. What you'll be, what you'll be blown away by is the level of preparation that he took and how diligent and thorough he was in all it was that he did. And that is one of the main reasons why he was so dominant. He doesn't have necessarily a dominant personality. He's actually a quiet guy. A lot of people describe him that way. But he absolutely dominated, and he dominated because he had a philosophy for why he did what he did, and his philosophy was based on performance. He calls it his standard of performance. When he got to San Francisco, the San Francisco 49ers, they had a really low standard for how they played and the organization. It was at the bottom of the barrel. And what he did is he came in there and said, I'm not going to worry about winning. I'm not going to worry about none of that. I'm going to focus only on implementing my standard of performance and making sure that it runs through the blood of every single person in this organization from the players all the way down to the janitors. He had it laid out. He spent out like six hours on the first day of practice detailing like he had binders, fats, uh, you know, like a foot wide binders laying out all of the philosophies. Everyone knew exactly what was expected of him. He spent countless hours preparing every detail he was known to, to, to flash on a player if he ran his route three inches over what it was supposed to be. He paid attention to detail, and this is what you must do. If you want to dominate in your sector, if you want to have a dominant mindset, you need to have a philosophy, and you need to be so um, focused on the smallest details of what it takes in order for you to succeed, in order to dominate, all right? So this book helped me out a lot. This book keeps me on check. Um, I listen to it all the time. Uh, it just reminds me of the level of detail that one needs to um, focus on if you truly want extraordinary results. Like if you want like average results, I guess you don't need to be that, you know, you don't need to pay that much attention to detail. However, if you want extraordinary results, you need to be uh, focused in a way that other people aren't focused. So Bill Walsh, The Score Takes Care of Itself. Great book, awesome stories, great practical lessons on leadership, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, that's that one. The next one is the book 50th Law, all right? Now, if you've heard this podcast before, you've heard me mention this book. I think one of the main reasons why this book is so powerful is because it's all based on the premise of being fearless, and I believe that being fearless is a prerequisite for accomplishing at a high level. And being fearless doesn't mean you don't feel fear. Being fearless means you do what must be done regardless of how you feel. You stand up in the face of obstacles and challenges. And ultimately, you develop more confidence to the point where you become 
somewhat fearless, quite honestly. Not everyone is scared of the things that you're scared of. Not everyone is scared of the things that I'm scared of. There is a way to condition yourself to no longer be afraid of the things that keep most people back. And that's what this book is, uh, is based on. Not only that, there's so many stories and examples from history, and it, it literally is a blueprint for dominating and having a dominant mindset. This is a, a book that I require all of my athletes to read. It is uh, one of the most important books that I've ever read, and it will, uh, I read it several times a year. Um, it's a powerful book, all right? So uh, I'll just read a little snippet from it. Move before you are ready, he says. Most people wait too long to go into action, generally out of fear. They want more money or better circumstances. You must go the opposite direction and move before you think you are ready. It is as if you are making it a little more difficult for yourself, deliberately creating obstacles in your path. But it is a law of power that your energy will always rise to the appropriate level. I remember when I read this with this book, I created a set of affirmations that I actually recorded on a track. And one of them was, my energy always rises to the appropriate level. <laughs> that's funny. All right, that's legit. 50th Law. It's one of my favorite books. Read that. Get that. It should be a part of your, your collection. All right, next book. This book, um, if you listen, I can't remember what episode it was, but I did an episode with Chance Whitehurst. And Chance was, at the time, he was an athlete at University of Oregon. I've known Chance since he was a sophomore in high school, and I used to coach him on his football team. Uh, but now he's runs track at Portland State, and he is competing to be in the Olympics. And uh, he's a beast. But anyway, he recommended this book to me. And when he told me, most of the time, like, or most of the time when people recommend books to me, I buy them. Because if you're telling me that this book had a, a big impact on you, I want to know what it is. I want to read it because I believe you. So he told me about this book. I bought it. And when I bought it, I looked at it and it looked really like old and I wasn't even sure who this dude was. And I flipped through it and it seemed like really over my head a little bit. But I trusted Chance and I read this book and it's called How to Do All Things by Mark Age. This book is so powerful. It's a, it's basically, it's a spiritual book, um, but it breaks down in a very practical, um, almost poetic way at times how to gain control over your subconscious mind and how to do all things. And the premise is that we are actually one with this energy that we call God, that we call universal intelligence, that we call nature, that we have access to this. And we can use it to do whatever it is that we want. Now, this is a concept that is not new maybe to you, Maybe you believe it. Maybe you don't. Um, I will say this. Those who have a dominant mindset don't deal in limits. And if you want to remove a lot of the limits, the mental limits, this book will do great to help you with that. Um, I had several epiphanies, several breakthroughs as I read it. And it is a book also that I read several times over again that I pull draw from frequently. I will snapshot pictures of this and send them to my friends, send them to my clients. Um, it's very, very powerful. How to Do All Things by Mark H. Your Use of Divine Power. All right. Next book, Urban Meyer, Above the Line. Urban Meyer, coach of Florida for a long time. Coach Tim Tebow, now the coach of Ohio State. What I love most about this book, honestly, and you don't get this with a ton of people, is he's so vulnerable in this book. Like he talked, I mean, he had a lot of success at Florida. But he talks very openly and candidly about the mistakes that he made and even how he let his family down a lot as he was really trying to reach towards, you know, his his goals of dominating college football and things. And he did, but at the expense of a lot of his relationships and things like that. And he talks a lot about what he learned through that, which is really powerful. Not only that, I just feel like I vibe with Urban Meyer, meaning like I, I like his philosophy. He's a all out aggressive dude, old school type of dude who really values hard work, relentless work ethic, and above the line he calls preparation. Very, very practical book. Also a lot of awesome stories in it. And you can just tell he's a beast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like another thing I took from this is he spends an incredible amount of time teaching and developing his staff 
and his players. Like he invests a ton of time into preparing his athletes mentally, not just physically. Like he takes them through leadership workshops. They spend a lot of time together as a team. He has what he calls his unit leaders, which are, you know, the running back coaches, um, linebacker coaches, et cetera. And he trains them. Like he spends a lot of time doing that. And that stood out to me a lot. And one of the things he talked about in the book was the whole idea of trust, that without trust, you can't lead. And so trust requires connection. Trust requires time spent. Trust requires a relationship. And he talked a lot about that in the book. So above the line will slap you in the face a lot, will show you how to be a leader. Those who dominate, those who have a dominant mindset naturally are leaders. So if you want to be a leader, grab the book, Urban Meyer, Above the Line. That's number four, right? Let's see, which one should I do next? I didn't stack these up in any particular order. Next one is called The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, all right? What's funny is, have you heard of the movie or the book The Secret, um, where the, this whole idea of law of attraction, right? And The Secret became very popular when I think Oprah Winfrey was one of the ones who made it very popular. She featured it on her show and things like that. And it was basically a movement, this whole idea that, you know, you attract that what you think about, your thoughts are things, and if you think about positive things, you'll attract positivity. Um, and and there's, there's elements of truth to that, right? I believe in the law of attraction. Now, that book or that movie in that book was actually based on Wallace D. Waddle's Science of Getting Rich, which was written much earlier in 19, 1900s. And so when you read this book, you'll find that he also agrees with the law of attraction. But the law of attraction and those who follow it in the way that they read about it and learn about it now don't understand that there's also other elements to it. And one of the distinguishing factors was this whole idea of doing what needs to be done like right now, doing all that can be done each day, taking massive amounts of action. And when you take that action, using the force and the power of your vision and purpose and putting it behind that action. Um, and so you can substitute getting rich and call this the science of dominating, the science of getting what you want, the science of success, and you will find the detailed principles mapped out in this book. It's extremely powerful. It can be a little bit difficult to read, uh, depending on how much you read, honestly. Um, but as you read it more and more, it's a very short book as well. I think it's like less than 100 pages. When you read it over and over, which I do, um, I've probably read it about three times this year, and it's, it's February. Um, it's a very short book, but it, it is it's so powerful. And one of the things he talked about there is understanding that all things contribute to your advancement. So being grateful for all the things that happen to you because they contribute to your advancement. Because, because he said the state of gratitude is what keeps you connected to God or the higher source energy. Gratitude. That emotion of gratitude is in direct alignment with God. So when you are aligned, then you're, you're unstoppable. So he talks about gratitude. So Science of Getting Rich, powerful book. I read this several times a year. You should as well get this book, all right? Next book, Relentless by Tim Grover. I also refer to this book a lot because Tim Grover was the, and this is, this is what's so awesome about books, all right? You could read a book from a guy who trained the best athletes in the world. He trained, he was Kobe Bryant's right-hand man, Michael Jordan's right-hand man. He wrote a book. That's a no-brainer. I'm going to read this book, and I'm going to find out what he knows. And I have read this book, and I have found out what Tim Grover knows, and I like what he knows, and I've used what he knows. And it applies to me, and it applies to you as well. Because in order to be great, in order to succeed at the highest of levels, you have to have unreasonably high standards for yourself. And you must have unbelievable amounts of trust in yourself when it comes time to play under pressure. And the way you gain that trust, as, a, as Tim Grover says it, is through undeniable, unrelenting, maniacal preparation. We're talking about being prepared for any and all situation. An approach to training. Having what I call a game time mentality towards training. Game time. Like, it's game time. Jordan approached every and Tim Grover says it. Don't let me tell you. Tim Grover tells 
tells us what Michael Jordan did every practice, what Michael Jordan did after every loss, after every win. Yo, what time we training? 7 a.m.? All right, see you there. Boom. It didn't matter. He was a machine, all right? So if you want to be great, study the greats. Tim Grover happened to uh, play side or, or train side by side with the greats. Check it out. Tim Grover, Relentless. Let's see. Got three more. The next one, The Way of the Superior Man by David Dieta. All right. Now, I recommend this book because for a few reasons. Maybe you're listening. Maybe you're not a man. Maybe you're a woman. Uh, maybe you are a man. What is true, though, is that you usually have someone along with you on this journey towards your success. And what this book did for me is helped me establish a new standard for myself in terms of my relationship with my wife and the responsibility that I play in leading us. All right. And so this book challenged me a lot in terms of, you know, my ability to know who it is that I am. When you know who you are, when you truly know who you are, you can lead much more effectively. When you don't know who you are, that's when you become a victim to vices. That's when you become, you know, have a lot of problems in your relationships um, and things like that. So anyway, this book is very powerful, especially for the men. Um, it will challenge you a lot. It will slap you in the face a lot. It will also give you some very practical things to do in order to make sure that you... Um, are living at your highest, you know what I'm saying? When, if you're truly being that lion in the jungle that I, that I know you are, all right? So David Dieta, The Way of the Superior Man, uh, extremely powerful book, very impactful. Thanks to my man James for recommending that to me. Um, it helped a lot, especially at the time it did. When he recommended I was going through it with my wife. A lot of struggles. That book helped me out a lot, all right? Two more books. Next one, Nick Saban, How Good Do You Want to Be? Nick Saban, again, if you want to study success, or if you want success, then you should study success. Who better than someone who consistently achieves at the highest of levels? Someone who dominates in any and all environments. That's Nick Saban, coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide, also the coach of the LSU Tigers. I think he won there as well. The dude is a beast, man. And what I learned from this is pretty much, here's the essence of this book. How good do you want to be? Start with that question. Okay, so you want to be really good? Okay. Don't focus on winning. Don't focus on championships. Focus on setting an incredibly high standard for yourself and every day reaching higher and higher towards that standard. Every day challenging yourself. Every day focusing on how you can improve only. How you can grow. How you can evolve. How you can expand only. And how do you do that? Be incredibly systemized. Be incredibly organized. Be incredibly demanding. Also be very flexible. But by, by no means, never lower the standard and always keep going. This was the message I got from Nick Saban. And it was very, very powerful because, again, he also, much like Nick Saban, was very open and honest about struggles that he's gone through. That's what I love about these coaches' books, man. It's like they, they show you all the mistakes that they made. I was reading Rick Pitino's book as well, which is also a great book. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, Success is a Choice by Rick Pitino. That's not in my top 10, but that is a great book. Um, and he was also talking a lot about the mistakes that he made. And so you can learn a lot about the mistakes that people made so that you don't repeat them and also find out what really works. And so this book was awesome. Um, I believe it's a classic, honestly. Um, Nick Saban will go down as possibly the best football coach of all time, I believe. And... Um, his philosophy is very well documented. Powerful book. All right, last book. This is my mentor, um, somebody who I feel very blessed to know personally that I spent some time with a few months ago in, um, in San Diego. This is by Mark Devine. I also interviewed him on this podcast. I was on his podcast as well. He has a podcast called The Unbeatable Mind. You should check it out. This book, <laughs> and he's got a couple, I think he's got three bestsellers. This book is hands down my favorite and my most referred to, like I refer back to this book a lot as well, and it's called The Way of the Seal. Think like an elite warrior to, to lead and succeed. We talking about thinking like a seal, like a Navy seal, being prepared, being focused, having practical 
very tangible solutions for how to stay calm in high pressure situations, how to plan, how to think long term, but also move now, how to be flexible, how to control your environment. I mean, this book changed the game for me a lot. And one of the biggest things that I started doing after I read this was I started, I think he calls it, what does he call it? Like his mental dojo or something like that. Or uh, he shows you how to basically set up, you know, your own mind gym pretty much where, you know, your the spot that you go in your mind to do certain mental exercises. Mark Devine is big on mental conditioning. He has a ton of very practical rituals in here that he outlines in great detail in the appendix in the back. Um, so this is a great book, a must read for all those, especially those who have businesses, business owners. It's a great leadership book as well. He gives some very practical ways of how he plans, how he leads, how he makes, makes decisions and things like that as well. So these are the 10 books. The question is, are you going to buy them? Like, do you buy books? And if you don't buy books, do you buy coffee? Do you buy shoes? Do you buy food? You need to buy books. You need to have a library, all right? I believe every, if you have the I'm not you mentality, you must have a library. You must have your own library. And that means a collection of books that you read consistently in order to help you develop and condition your mind to dominate in any and all circumstances under any and all pressure. These 10 books are the best way to start. Get these 10 books and begin reading them. What's your goal for the year in terms of how many books you want to read? Set a goal. The average book is about 220 pages, let's say. Times that by 10, then divide it by 12. That's how many, or divide it by 365. That's how many pages you need to read a day and get to it. Set the timer each morning after your meditation, after your blueprinting, after whatever. It can be at night. Another thing I do, I read while I brush my teeth. That's two minutes in the morning, two minutes at night. I read approximately three pages every time I brush my teeth, depending on the book that I'm reading. That's six pages a day. So six times 365 divided by 220. Wow, that's nine books. That's nine books a year just brushing my teeth, just like that. So there's no excuse for not reading. You must read. These 10 books will get you on a fast track towards dominating, all right, and developing a dominant mindset. Let me know if you got any questions. I love talking books. Get yourself a Prime, Amazon Prime account and start ordering some books, all right? Let's get to it. Thank you for tuning in to the Sports Motivation Podcast. Make sure if you dig in the podcast, go and subscribe so you can always get the latest episodes. I come out with a new episode twice a week on Tuesday and Friday at 3 a.m. Eastern. And make sure you go ahead and rate it and leave me a good review. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and I'll talk to you soon. Much love. Yo, one of the most common questions I get from athletes all the time is this. What is the single best thing I can do to reach my goals? How can I set myself apart from everybody else? Obviously, there are a lot of things, but the one thing that's helped set me apart was having a coach, a mentor, someone to show me the right strategies and how I need to do things specifically to achieve my results. So you could try to do it on your own, but you'll end up making many mistakes that could have been avoided if you had someone guiding you and coaching you along the way. 99% of athletes in the world have, have expert coaches to show them the things that they can't see. If you want to work with me as your coach, I want you to go to I'mNotYou.com forward slash SRC and learn more and sign up for a free coaching session. I'll give you 60 minutes of my time for free and I can teach you some dynamic strategies plus show you how you can secure me as your sports results coach. All I ask is that you fit in this criteria. You're serious about your sport. You're willing to invest the time and money, and you have clear goals of taking your game to the next level or some sort of specific results you want to achieve. This is definitely not for everyone, and I have very limited spots available for this. So if this applies to you, I want you to take action. Go to imnotyou.com forward slash SRC, and I guarantee you're going to take your game and your career to the next level.